In 2019-3, Tableau have improved the aggregations available to you when you use parameter actions. To show you this, I'm first going to build a very basic chart. I'll drag profit onto columns and sales onto rows. I'll then break this down by city. I'll rotate this 90 degrees just to make it easy to see. You'll also see that country and state have been brought into the view because they're part of the hierarchy. Okay, next up, I'll create the parameter. So the first one I'll create, will actually use to show the first quarter. So let's call this first quarter. I'll set this to value of zero and hit okay. I'll duplicate this, then I'll edit this, call it third quarter. Okay, I'll also leave this as a value of zero and then I'll show both of these parameter controls on our view on the right hand side. So at the moment, these are both set to zero. The next thing I'll do is I'll add a reference line to reflect both of these values. I'll select the first value. I'll give it a custom label, select the value, and I'll put FQ for first quarter. I'll make this line orange, so it's a little bit easier to see, and I'll make it thin. You'll see that because I selected zero, it sits on the axis. I'll add another reference line. This time, the third quarter. Again, I'll go to custom, select a value, then I'll put TQ. I'll make this line a slightly different color. I'll make it green. I'll also make it thin. And you'll see here that both items are now on that axis. If you want to, you can move one of these labels to the right hand side. So all you have to do is go to the alignment, select the right hand side, and you'll see the first quartile labels on the left and the third quartile labels on the right, but both of them are sitting on the zero axis. Now the final step is to get this parameter action to change these values. So I'll head up to worksheet actions and I'll add the first action by selecting change parameter will affect the first quarter. We have to make sure we choose the right value here because if I was to say choose sales, I would actually be showing the first quarter for the selection on the sales, which is not where I've actually set the reference lines. What I need to actually do is make sure I choose profit, which is on my Y axis, because that's the axis I use for the reference lines. I'll select profit, and you'll see here that we have first quarter and third quarter as the new aggregations. You won't, however, see the third option, which is concatenation. We'll come to that in a second. Select first quarter. I'll call this FQ action, so it's easy to reference it later. Click OK. Click OK, and we'll test this out. If I select four items, you'll see that the first quarter changes to reflect. And when we deselect, that stays. Right, let's apply the second one. Let's go to actions, add an action, change parameter. This time, the third quartile, the field, it's the profit, third quartile is the aggregation, hit OK. Before we do that, we need to remember to change our names. So I'll call this third quartile. It's always good to label your parameters. And now when we select the items, both lines change to reflect the options. You can also see the parameter values are updating here on the right hand side. Now the last step is to use the concatenation option to show a list of the selected values when we made the selection. In order to do this, I need to create one more parameter. I'll create a parameter by clicking in the white space and I'll call this the cities parameter. The reason being is that I'm gonna dynamically feed a feed, I'm gonna dynamically feed a list of cities into this option. The default value is going to be a hyphen. And you'll notice that I set this up to be a float. It actually needs to be a string in order to work. So I set that to a hyphen and click OK. And then I'll show this parameter on the right hand side. So now we've got our third aggregation type that's been added in this release. The last thing to do is to apply an action so that when I select 
a, a, a group of marks. It's going to dynamically feed a list of cities into that parameter and it's going to concatenate them into that parameter. So I hit OK. The last thing I need to do is to have the list show in a particular place. So I'm going to do this by putting that parameter in my title, setting the font to about 11, hit apply. You'll notice that I can't see anything at the moment. And when I select four items, you'll see that the four cities I selected, Berlin, Madrid, Paris, and Vienna, are also available to us. Now what I could do is also add the values from our parameter into this as well. And I'll just use an abbreviation so that it's easy to see. And I'll make this one size smaller again, just to give it some differentiation. You'll see here I added the label in the wrong place. I need to actually add it after. Hit apply. And you'll now see that the values are showing. I've got a lot of decimal places in there, but that's just an example of how you can use the new functionality to generate lists and calculations available to you that stay available after you've deselected the items. That's it.